Michael Vick, um, who has really had a lot to say about Lamar Jackson throughout the years, very supportive uh, of Lamar Jackson throughout the years. Even um, there was one point where he said he felt like Lamar Jackson is a better quarterback and a better player than he was. Uh, and I think a lot of us would agree with that. And that's obviously not a shot at Michael Vick at all, because um, Michael Vick was nice, man. Michael, Michael Vick, he was nice, man. He was Probably my favorite uh, offensive player to watch back in his day. And I mean, being a Ravens fan, like it's easy to have favorite offensive players from other teams. The Ravens offense. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, Michael Vick was on former Raven, former Ravens tight end, former Ravens Super Bowl champion, Shannon Sharp's club Shay Shay. And the topic brought got brought up about Lamar Jackson's contract. And it's funny because. Uh, my guy Josh, he 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 said it best um, because one of the biggest reasons why he didn't, why he wanted Lamar contract to be done and over with before this season started, because he just knew, he knew it would be a subject of conversation really every week, but especially after bad games, because that's when people are like, oh, see, this is why he doesn't deserve the contract, and it's just it creates this narrative and this back and forth and this debate. But anyway. Michael Vick, he had something very interesting to say when it came to Lamar and what he should or perhaps should not do. What if you can get Dalgo to talk with him, you can advise Lamar. How do you advise him in that situation? I understand. I would advise him in terms of. I understand the business acumen in, in this whole situation. Like it, it, it makes sense for you to get the most money that you can possibly make in this game because, like you said, one false movie, season end, career can be ended, injury, and then you know you might get treated a certain way. And so that's that's logical. That's, that, that can become fact. But one, I think Cleveland made that move to make it hard for Lamar. Right. Two. When you, when you accept this type of money, versus based on cap space, and the one thing that it becomes a real issue with it, it's hard to sign other guys, man. Right. It's hard to keep things together. Right. You want to basically have to structure. Um, yeah, I'll be structured. Yeah, you know, you keep it up. Yeah, but I need that real So after hearing all of Michael Vick's points, is he right? Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, Michael Vick with some very interesting comments about one Lamar Jackson saying that he should not accept the maximum amount of money that he could possibly get from the Baltimore Ravens. And he brought up how, yeah, we know that the NFL, it is not for long uh, and an injury can happen at any given second. So that's why players try to get and coop as much money as they possibly can, which makes sense because NFL, it is a very violent sport. And like you mentioned, any given snap, any given play, things could change like that. And I mean, he is obviously speaking from experience because he dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his career. So he knows, hey, players, get, get your money. But his reasoning on why Lamar Jackson should not take the most money that he possibly can was because it makes it harder to build a team uh, around him. And I, I've seen a lot of Ravens fans talk about this. Oh, yeah, if Lamar gets 250 mil guaranteed or whatever the guarantee ends up being, um, then, oh, Ravens, they're not going to be able to get anybody else now. I've continued to say it before, and I'll say it again. That is 100% false. That is 100% a lie. If a team wants to build a team, if a team wants to continue to com co construct a competitive roster, if they want to, it can be done. They can make it happen. We look at these Kansas City Chiefs, and boy, these Kansas City Chiefs, they were always around. And like with Alex Smith, they, they would be making the playoffs, but they weren't really making no serious, crazy noise like that. So then here comes this quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. And the Chiefs, they realize like, whoa, wait a minute. This guy is special. And they already had some weapons with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelce and whatnot. Um, but they continue to add more and they continue to, to make these competitive rosters year in year out so then what happened Patrick Mahomes was due he was due to get paid and what happened did he get paid he certainly got paid and he had this deal worth up to half a billion dollars 
Um, the way they they constructed it is, is like what a ten year deal and f- worth up to five hundred million. Of course, it got all this incentives and whatnot. But bottom line, Patrick Mahomes got paid, and they still took care of Tyreek Hill. Again, he wasn't traded until this last offseason. Patrick Mahomes been paid, but they still took care of Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, and and they they got Orlando Brown Jr. They they continue, and, and you know what, Chiefs they they always looking to add more. Always looking at, I mean, they, they literally just signed Melvin Gordon. I know he missed a fumble. And they just signed, uh, what, Brian Edwards? And, and Anyway, the Chiefs are always looking to add more. But my point is, because just because Patrick Mahomes got paid, it did not stop the Chiefs from continuing to add around their quarterback. Offense and defense. The Bills. Buffalo Bills. Mr. Josh Allen. They drafted this guy. And Josh Allen, they were like, ah, we don't know about Josh Allen yet. So what did they do? They added a Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, Cole Beasley, John Brown. You know, yeah, I mean, you, you know how it goes. They, they added a bunch of guys and whatnot. So then Josh Allen got paid. They paid him because they were like, we're not sure about him. We see some potential, but we're really going to invest in this quarterback. And they invested in him with weapons around him. And they also invested in him with money to him and for him. But still, even after that, they continued adding pieces. Even after Josh Allen got paid. Von Miller was an older guy. And a lot of us looked at this contract. And we know the contract isn't everything that it appears to be. And that's really with any NFL contract. Unless it's fully guaranteed. But with Von Miller's contract, we looked at that and like, man, whoa, they, they paying him a lot of money. And it still is a significant contract now. But that contract came way after they paid Josh Allen. After, not before, not around the same time, it came after. I don't want to hear this about, oh, if Lamar Jackson gets, I mean, y'all already know, I don't even think the Ravens are going to pay Lamar Jackson as is. I don't think they're going to give him the money, but because I just, I don't think they are invested in him as a quarterback. I think they, they, I just don't think that they believe in him as a quarterback. I, I just really don't see it because of how they've moved and how, how they've operated for these past five years. If these past five years with Lamar Jackson have shown you anything, or really four and a half, but if these past four and a half years have shown you anything about how the Ravens feel about Lamar Jackson, it's that they don't believe in him as a quarterback. Because we've had this conversation time and time again. We've had it time and time again. You, you see all these other young quarterbacks. These teams are going crazy for them. Getting veteran, like good veterans, still in their prime and getting young guys too, getting a nice little mix. Like, like good, like significant guys though, outside guys. You see Kyler Murray. They went and got him DeAndre Hopkins. I'm like, oh, that, that should have been all wide receiver. But they went and got him DeAndre Hopkins. And they still was drafting guys too. With uh, Tua, obviously. Tyreek Hill, Waddle, Kisiki. They went and got him still. Jalen Hurts, he the biggest, most recent example. And what they they what, 10 and 1? And like even with Jalen Hurts, like that's how you take advantage of a rookie deal. They went and got received. They got offensive play, and they went and got defense too. Like they doing it on both sides of the ball. It ain't even just about the quarterback. They doing it on both sides of the ball. Lamar Jackson. And I, I just I hate I hate to have to bring this up because I don't I don't like like going backwards, but it is still significant unanimous MVP. That means it was a clear cut decision by everybody who voted. Like it's him, it's him. It ain't nobody else. And after the the, the Ravens still they still got they they, they got what at the year after Des Bryant that was their big acquisition. And their big acquisitions at, at the receiver position have been Dez Bryant, Willie Sneed, Seth Roberts, Sammy Watkins. And again, it ain't no offense to those guys, but it is offensive to Lamar Jackson as a quarterback. It's offensive. And then this year, they like, all right, well, bye, Hollywood. He, he wanted to go anyway, so okay, bye. He's gone. Still had Bateman. But again, Bateman, I said it last year. All right, Bateman got hurt. You can't put all your eggs in that basket because it's a lot of unknown. What happens this year, he gets hurt again. And the Ravens, they still got Prochet. They still got Tylen Wallace. They don't care about those guys. 
They've shown you that. They, they've shown you that. If they cared about those guys, you think that Marcus Robinson will be here? You think Deshaun Jackson will be here? You think Andy Isabella, even though he's not here, you think he will be here? No, man. No, man. Then the Ravens in the draft, they have Mark Andrews already. They have Josh Oliver already. They have Nick Boyle already. And I'm sure with, uh, I think with Josh Oliver, maybe they didn't expect. They, 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 they just kept him around just to be sort of safe with a Nick Boyle. But then after not re-signing Sammy Watkins, which nobody expected them to. And I don't think we even wanted them to. After cutting Miles Boykin, after trading Hollywood, you're down three receivers. But really, two, you're down two impactful receivers. You didn't draft not one. You doubled down the tight end. But you didn't draft not one receiver. So they show you how they move, man. They show you how they move. They're not invested in Lamar like that, man. So for him, for Vic, I, that's why I heavily disagree with the, oh, yeah, he should take less money. To, uh, for the Ravens so they could, they could build a team No, why? Because they've shown you that they're going to build a team around him already? Defense, yeah, oh yeah, they, they go crazy for defense Which again, it's all, it's all philosophy, man It's all philosophy, which we know It's their philosophy, it's what they love, what they invest in, what they cherish Run game and defense Pass game, uh, Wide receiver, uh, no So yeah, if I'm Lamar Like, no, get, get your bread Get your bread. I don't think it's going to come from the Ravens. But get your bread. Get your money. And if, hey, if the Ravens, they don't want to meet your demands, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's business. It's, it's still all love. It's going to be all love regardless. But that's the business. So, and why would, like, how could you tell somebody not to try to get the most money that they possibly can? Why, why should he take a, a, a hometown discount or a lower rate or something to help the team when has the team really been going all in to help him? No, no, they haven't. So I would continue, as we always have, to encourage Lamar to get his bread and get the most bread that you can possibly get. Why? Because you've already earned it. Yeah.